What has happened here in Canada in the past few years with Justin Trudeau and Canada becoming horribly woke is now starting to affect the rest of the planet. You see, Vladimir Putin has now looked at this situation. Russia has recently declared that the LGBTQ movement is a, how do we say this, a bad movement. Russia has officially added the international LGBT movement to a list of, uh, a word that rhymes with mayor. The word mayor, like city of mayor, except put a T in the front of mayor. Simply put, they're saying people from the LGBT community are extreme people and they are put on the same list as very bad people who come from those countries that are kind of situated around all the conflict that's happening, you know, south of Dubai, Iran, around there, around there, the bad guys that are around there. Now this decision came from the Supreme Court in Russia, obviously controlled by Putin. <laughs> Not exactly a, a democratic situation uh, for its role in inciting social and religious discord, according to Human Rights Watch, but is now added to the country's list of official organizations. From this article here on the counter signal, it says upon the categorization of the LGBT movement as an extreme sports kind of fun, fun times organization, it immediately became illegal in the country to finance or participate in LGBT movement as with other extreme or city mayors, sorry, it's the only way I can do this, organizations. This includes waving the rainbow flag, an action that has resulted in at least three court cases that have been tried this year. That's right, in Russia, you can't wave a rainbow flag anymore. We gotta talk about this and its implications with Canada here, because obviously this is something they just didn't pull out of nowhere. This most likely came directly from Canada and Justin Trudeau. So what does this mean now for people in Russia if they do wave a rainbow flag or support one of these organizations? 12 years in jail? <laughs> that might be a big bit stream. Now I'm someone who thinks we should have way more extreme laws in Canada here. You know, people steal a car, put them in jail for 10 years. But I think that's a far <laughs> worse thing than, than waving a rainbow flag. No one should be going to jail for waving a rainbow flag. People should be going to jail for stealing a $200,000 car or a $10,000 car, it doesn't matter. So this article says that the, uh, this is a movement that's been kind of happening in Russia here where they keep outlawing Western uh, subversion with 17 LGBT organizations being uh, labeled as foreign agents. This trend has especially intensified since the, uh, the bad times with uh, Ukraine has started. This movement basically started in 2013 with the uh, infamous gay propaganda ban that was reinforced in 2022. The promotion of traditional sexual relations and legal and or medical gender changes have also been outlawed in Russia. Now this is something that Putin really probably didn't have on his mind at all until Justin Trudeau got in power. See Trudeau got in power at the end of 2014. And so here he had a, a whiff of the, the wokeness coming through, but it's not just wokeness. Putin is very extreme and this makes it kind of a muddy situation because obviously the conservatives of Canada, as well as the, the Republicans in America are all on the same side of, you know, woke till you're broke. We don't, we don't want the wokeness. The wokeness is ridiculous. It's not good for anything. In the case of Russia, though, it's just gone to the extreme. Obviously, somebody waving a rainbow flag should not be put in jail and for 12 years, not even one day. It's ridiculous. If someone wants to go wave a flag with an alien on it, who cares? Same thing with the rainbow flag. It's just when things are pushed to the extreme, right? There's nothing wrong with people in the LGBTQ. Any one of those acronyms, whether you're gay, lesbian, bi, trans, they're all people. People are people. It's just when things are pushed to the extreme. That's when you get woke till you're broke and that's what the problem is here, right? It's just the same if somebody is a vegan or is a carnivore eater, totally normal people, totally fine. No one cares, no one cares. But if you get pitchfork vegans that are chanting at the, the steakhouse or the opposite, you got the anti-pitchfork <laughs> carnivore person goes and eats a raw steak in front of a vegan protest. Those are obviously both very extremes, the same situation. So it's not, the, it's not the people in the middle, it's, it's always the outliers that are the problem here in, in any society. But Russia has gone so far over that they're just not even banning a whiff of it, which is crazy. There's a lot of problems that come from something like this. Obviously, if you're, if you're banning what people can say or do, then it restricts just even just how the mind works. This will affect innovation and technology. People need to have complete freedom in a sense. You can't run up and down the aisles of an airplane and yell a certain word. 
obviously there's, there's freedom of speech, which doesn't absolve you from consequence. But in general, if you have the freedom for your mind to explore, this is just better for society. It will inevitably lead to better innovations in a society. But being so closed off like they are in Russia, you know, long term is not going to be good. But then Putin's not thinking long term. He's not going to be alive in, you know, what, how, how old is he now? Like 60? 65 or something? You, you know, give him 20 years, like he's not going to be around. 25 years at most probably. So I know a lot of people in the, the West here in Canada will, see, will hear that and be like, yeah, get rid of that woke. But it's, it's really too extreme. It's, it doesn't need to be that extreme. And it's actually ba bad for society. And it's also bad for people in those situations who feel outlawed or whatever. I think I can understand what that feels like. I was bullied severely as a kid, which is why I spent years doing martial arts and spend five, six days a week in the gym for the past whatever 20 years when you get suppressed and uh, you know kind of pushed down by society it doesn't feel good so i think it's important for as canadians and americans if they're watching that we don't get uh too wrapped up in putin's extreme policies waving a flag is not hurting anyone now changing policies to extreme policies uh, not having proper rights for for young ones you know, that's where, okay, the, the woke has gone too far. Woke till you broke. Or in the case of what we're dealing with here in Canada as the most extreme example is the climate change without proper evidence. We've got Guillebeau citing research that he paid to have due. Like that's woke till you broke. That's where this wokeism gets way too far. Anyone who lives in Toronto, I feel for you not being able to look at this every day. Look at this, all of this. This is my backyard. I lived in uh, Toronto, St. Catharines area for two years. I hated it. <laughs> I got out of there pretty quick. I actually sold uh, a lot of stuff. I quit my job on the spot. I booked a mover and I just moved back to Vancouver and somehow I made it work. Got a job, got a crappy little apartment, 400 square feet, 1100 bucks right in the West End and uh, eventually got a job at Microsoft and the rest is history. So I'm wondering as we go forward here with all this wokeism and, and showing how it affects the power in a country as well as affecting the people, the society. I wonder if other countries, we'll call them bully countries like Russia, if they're going to follow suit and be like, oh, we don't want to have that disease in our country, all that crazy wokeism. We better put in some strict, you know, no flag flying rules or 12 years in jail, crazy stuff like that. Truly remarkable, you've got a guy, Justin Trudeau, with no credentials to run a country. He gets in there because his dad got in there 30 years earlier. And it's just, it's changed the fabric of, of society, of, of countries, of just everything. You have one idiot running a country and it just sets an example for a whole bunch of other ones to do different things. A side note, I have no idea where I am. <laughs> <laughs> paying too much attention to uh, talking to the camera here. Now I don't know where I am, which is always fun. And with the uh, looming American election coming up, it's most definite that Donald Trump is going to win because sleepy Joe Biden can't even, like, the guy's senile. He's, 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 his mind is gone. He can't run a country. I don't even know why they would have him as their candidate. But anyways, he's not going to win. So then you're going to get uh, Trump back in there. You're going to get Polyev up here, and it's going to be a complete... Uh, right right wing uh, North America for the most part. Uh, how is that going to affect things? How is that going to change the world? I, I think about all this kind of stuff a lot. I was talking to a family member today and I was saying just a, a basic kind of theory. If, if you're going to have someone who's a president or a prime minister in a country, I think they should have like a basic physical test. Could they like wrestle a black bear for 10 seconds or <laughs> something like that? They have to have at least some sort of basic physical prowess to, <laughs> I don't know, it just seems you can't have a guy who's senile, doesn't remember who he is, where he is, and, oh geez, and then have that as a leader of a country. It's got to be someone who's tack sharp. And I think Justin Trudeau is actually very, he's very sharp. What he's doing is very detrimental to us. It's not in our best interest, it's in his, unfortunately. So we've got a, a sharp guy running our country who's an evil man. And there's no doubt that Putin is also very sharp. He just won election again in Russia. He just switches his title from one to the next and it allows him to stay in power indefinitely. Made it to the beer garden right over there. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about uh, that whole situation with Russia, Putin and banning LGBTQ in the country 
it seems like, uh, you know, if you're in that country and you're living in Moscow, things are modern and nice, but I don't think it's such a nice, uh, friendly place if you get outside the city and it seems very locked down. Not, it doesn't seem like a great life to live over there, that's for sure. But let me know your guys' thoughts. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. It's my second channel here. I'll keep delivering the news to you guys. Stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one.